Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to be covering the backpack I carry every day. I guess you could call it my EDC. Uh, so on a typical uh, on a typical day, I am carrying uh, my meds, medications, whatever uh, that is that I take. And this is enough to last me from nine in the morning until six in the evening. As long as these aren't exposed to extreme heat, these are fine. So in here, I also carry in this little um, elastic band, I carry a regular um, ballpoint pen, it's a gel pen, and a double-sided Sharpie marker. And you'll see why here in a minute why I carry that, but it is a ultra fine tip and a fine tip. So your normal size and then your small size. Small size on this one's actually is actually dried out, so um, I need to get a new one. And then I also keep a 60 ml flush syringe in here as well. Right behind that, I carry my keys. So then I keep a flashlight. This is technically a trauma kit, and if I remember to, I'll link it down below. This has on the front here a tourniquet. It's a Cat 7 tourniquet. So if I got shot, or since I work on the farm, if I got my arm caught in a piece of machinery, it got ripped off or cut off, you'd open this up, I'm not going to right now, and then you would tighten it down, and then you would open the windlass, this is called the windlass, uh, and then you would tighten this down on your arm. Typically you want to go three to four inches above it. I'm going to be getting a dedicated pouch for the tourniquet just like the flashlight has a dedicated pouch um, and then I also carry a water bottle in here and I'll explain more about that in a minute uh, I'm going to be getting a dedicated pouch for this because I actually have a new type of water bottle that is just a little bit too tall to fit into this pouch this here this is a trauma kit pouch it's got pockets on the inside um, I use it for a water bottle pouch I was going to get it um, a trauma kit to put into this to be a trauma kit pouch, but I just haven't had the money <laughs> Then I've got a pouch for my phone. Obviously my phone's not in it right now because I'm recording on it um, But that's there then this tube you'll see this in a minute. This goes to a hydration bladder I do not fill this hydration bladder. My airsoft vest that has my magazines in it also known as the ballistic vest that stops bullets Mine does not stop bullets. It does not have bullet stopping plates in it. Uh, it has water plates in it. So I have water in that vest. So, and I'll make a video on that in the future, but maybe when I go over a, make a longer video on going over my airsoft gear, but right now I'm not doing that because I don't have all my gear. I have, my guns are at the shop right now. So in the very front pocket here, I've got three different types of gloves. I got small, medium, and large. The mediums are white or clear, a clearish white, um, also known as vinyl, I think. Uh, then I've got the light blue that are large, and I've got the dark blue that are small. I use the small primarily. I packed these a few months ago, and I've only used one pair out of them, or someone else has. I also carry two different types of hemostat, actually two different types, four pairs total um, of hemostats. I keep two straight and two not straight, two curved, and looks like these might have gotten a little messed up or something, but and I also carry a pair of scissors, which I'm not sure are in here or if those are the ones that are supposed to be in the pack. Um, you can check out my awesome tube video, or correction, feeding tube video, sorry, uh, on more on that in that video. I went over using the hemostats. Now this, this typically does not get affected too bad by the heat. I don't know why, but I have two rolls of Hyperfix and one roll of silk tape. I only need one roll of silk tape. Technically, I only need one roll of pipe affix. Um, one smaller than the other. That might be why I'm carrying two. I don't remember. Uh, then I, I have covered this in my supply room video. 
Um, this is just the Hydrozord we put um, on my J tube, my feeding tube. And you can go check that out in the supply room video. I show you the difference between the old and the new stuff. Um, the old stuff um, is a hydrophobic one, hydrophobic dressing, and this is a foam flex dressing, non-adhesive non foam dressing. So, um, yeah, they're a little bit different. Um, in here, I have, I'm supposed to have five ostomy bags, five um, wafers, and five Convitec discs. Um, and that, that's all right here. Now, again, I'm running very low on them because they've been exposed to the heat and I can't restock them until then. Uh, down here, I've got um, adhesive remover. Uh, so these don't like to come off all in one piece. So you have to use the adhesive remover to get it off. Uh, I just peel the whole dressing off and then peel the adhesive off separately. A lot of people don't. I believe in nursing school they teach you um, to rub on the dressing first and then peel it off slowly and they get it off all in one piece. I don't know. And I'll update you on that. Then here, um, like I explained in my um, supply room video, alcohol swabs. I buy these myself. I think these are left over. These ones in here are left over from um, before I ordered my own, um, before I purchased them myself, but anyways, I'm running low on those, I'm running low on everything in this pack right now, and this pack I use literally every day for everything you see in here, I use every day, except for the feeding tubes that you will see in the back of this in a little bit. So in here, I keep band-aids, little boo-boo kit, um, everybody needs band-aids. Those are self-explanatory. I keep um, multiple slip tip ten ml. I keep some in sterile packaging. I keep some out of sterile packaging. These are just the ones I've opened. Um, I keep scissors in here, and pretty soon I'm going to be getting a new pair of trauma shears. These are just ordinary medical scissors that come in the central line kits. Um, I just have those in there temporarily until I get a new pair of trauma shears. Mine are ruined. Very tightly packed in here is a thing of. Um, most people would call this uh, Tegaderm. It's a little square with a round face on it, I guess. Uh, this is actually called Opsite. It's also known as IV3000. It is from Smith & Nephew. Um, that's just the brand that I have used for years and I will continue using until they no longer uh, give it. Now, I did buy this with my own money off of Amazon. So there's syringes, slip tip syringes, and the band-aids, and the Opsite IV3000 dressings. They're, it's basically the same thing as Tegaderm, it's just got different properties to it. So I am allergic to Tegaderm, that's why I cannot use it. I carry this in my backpack, and I will make a video on my medical ID sometime. Um, that's a little more in-depth because it goes into some privacy things that I've got to blur out. Um, in the back here, I carry two by twos in the back of this uh, supply compartment. Again, I typically carry 35. You can see I'm very low. I've got probably six left in here. Um, in the back here, I carry benzoin. I typically carry six of these, which I believe is two stacks of three each. I only have four in here right now, so I'm running a little bit low. Um, these expire in April 2023. Then deep down in the back here, I keep 10, and I don't hardly ever use these. Um, so in the back here, I keep non-adherent uh, pads. Those are for the if you get a cut on your arm or something, if you use the 2x2s, two it will stick to your wound uh, or to what will eventually form a scab. <clears throat> and then when you take these off, it will rip the scab off. These are not that way. So, but I keep those in there. Um,
And again, it's very full when I have everything in here like it's supposed to. And if I'm going to be going out to somewhere for a full day or something where there's a very high chance of me going to, my belly's going to leak, my ostomy dressing is going to come off um, or leak, um, then I'll restock this if I know I'm going to be going somewhere for a long period of time, like 12 plus hours. If I go to an overnight, typically I'll take my hospital bag. Um, I might take this and enough formula and meds to last me a full night. I don't know. I haven't really decided on that yet. Uh, in the next compartment here, I have a 1200 ml feed bag. As you can see right now, I'm almost done, which means I need to grab the new one out of the refrigerator. Um, this is about a liter and a half, 1500 mls um, when we fully fill it. Um, the pump, which is a Moog Infinity pump. This is about $1,500, dollars um, It used to be $500. Um, I can go look it up on Vitality Medical sometime. Um, you guys can also go to vitalitymedical.com and look that up. I'm not sponsored by Vitality Medical. It's just where we order most of our supplies from if we're buying them ourselves. Um, so you can go look at them. So that's the uh, feeding bag compartment. Now this compartment's kind of hard to see into, and I'll do my best to show you. Uh, these are what we call trucks pads. I'm not gonna get them out there. Pain in the butt to repack into this. I took them out of plastic packaging in the basement that was not sterile, non-sterile, uh, and put them into this Ziploc bag because I did not need 20 of them in my backpack. I only needed four. Four will be enough. Maybe I should put six in there, but I can only fit four in a Ziploc bag. I only want to put one Ziploc bag in my backpack of this size. These are the tubes. I covered this in my feeding tube video. You can go look at that. Um, I carry two of them in here. And then my three liter hydration bladder. No, I'm not going to take this out again. This is a major pain in the butt to get out of this backpack and get back in nice and flat. Otherwise, it creates a crease that hurts my back. I'm not taking it out. Um, what else? Oh, let me, just pull, let me put this stuff back in and then I'll show you the dump pouch I use. So I'll show you this on me here in a minute, but this pouch here opens up to about four times its size. So you undo the belt, you pull the vel Velcro flap, you fold it out, and then you unfold, un you open it up like that. This has a drawstring here. I'm not going to show it right now because you would not be able to tell on video. It would also pull my tube out if I put my backpack like that. Um, if you leave, so typically this is on a gunner's belt, um, like at an airsoft event, I put my magazines in it. In the real world, police um, and military um, use this to put their empty rifle magazines in or their pistol magazines, um, depending on what they're doing. But you're just, you'll be firing your rifle, you'll drop a mag, you'll put it in your dump pouch. What I use this for and why it's attached to my backpack is more of the reason I was need to explain it in this video um, is let me pull it back up and I'll show you what I use it for. So if I'm doing if I am doing my morning meds, which are five syringes, that I do not keep on me in this pouch because this pouch can only support uh, six syringes plus the flush syringe, so seven total. It cannot fit 14. It can only fit seven syringes. And I'm already busting it literally at the seams. I don't know if you can tell that or not, but it is already maxed out. So, but the, but if I'm doing my morning meds or if I had to do my ostomy or something, I can pull this thing open. I can unfold it and I can open it up with my hand with single-handed and I can put my trash or my extra syringes in there 
If I'm going to be going on a long car trip, I'll open this up and I'll put my gaming controller in there that I can pair to my phone and play Minecraft with. I've tried playing other things with that gaming controller. You can only play Minecraft, to my knowledge, on an iPhone SE second generation. They may have updated something, but I have not found that to be true. So, but that's my backpack. Um, if you guys like the video, please comment down below. Um, share it with your friends. Hit the like button if you did like it. Um, and subscribe so I can keep bringing you more. Thanks, and have a great day. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.